Good evening, I'm Byron Brown, and welcome to Honoring Black History, Mind, Body, Soul. We're coming to you from the two Mississippi museums here in Jackson, where galleries tell the history about the civil rights era, and where stories are also told about people who helped shape our state. But for the next 30 minutes, we'll highlight stories about black history that we hope will enlighten or perhaps inspire you. Driving through Mount Bayou today is hard to believe this is one of the country's first and largest African-American towns in a segregated America, founded by two cousins born into slavery. It's way too important for us to let another generation go and not tell the story about Mount Bayou. When there was segregation in this country, uh, black people needed somewhere to go, and Mount Bayou was that place in the South. I'm so excited to get in seventh grade to go to my Mississippi history class. Um, they gave us a book. I had to go find in the index that it said something about Mount Bayou that it was one sentence. Nobody wanted to tell our story. There is no secret that the relationship between police officers and black and brown communities in this country have been strained. After the death of George Floyd in 2020, the tension between police and minority communities grew even greater. But there are those who are working hard to try and change that. Several members of the Tempe, Arizona Police Department and their invited guests recently took a cultural enrichment trip through the South, which included four southern cities. Among them, New Orleans, Selma, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, where they toured the Legacy Museum and also made a stop right here in Jackson, Mississippi. It's about learning. You know, all of this is about seeking to understand and really understand exactly what the, the culture and the history behind uh, what has shaped our country. And for law enforcement, it's important to be able to understand and know that history, to be able to understand exactly the best way of policing people here in, in our in our in our perspective area. They visited New Horizon Church to listen and talk with church members about their concerns with policing in their community. It's a good thing, and policing is a good thing. I have invested my life in. Then it was back to the bus and off to the Civil Rights Museum to understand the state's history. Michael Horn is a retired commander and helped organize his tour because he's done it several times before and he as well as supporters of the trip believe it's insightful what's been so amazing is seeing this these officers from tempe arizona lean into some difficult conversations be vulnerable with each other vulnerable with the people that we're meeting and really processing a lot of these things at a deeper level and uh, seeing their reaction and how this week has gone so far for Tempe officer Ryan Cook, it's his first time ever in the South, and he definitely wants to see positive changes. My deeper feeling is to make a change, to have a conversation that is not easy for individuals to have, and that is we all want to be there to make a community better. Tonight at 10, Jackson's water is still not safe to drink. Now state and city leaders are coming together to fix the problems, but how long will it take? 12 News at 10 starts right now. Today marks one month since the state placed the entire city of Jackson under a boil water notice. Now the water crisis has gotten even worse. Governor Tate Reeves declared a state of emergency tonight. Tonight, Governor Tate Reeves declared a new state of emergency, citing failure at the OB Curtis water treatment facility. This is a very different situation from a boil water notice, which is also a serious situation which residents of Jackson have become tragically numb to. Today marks day 32 of the most recent boil water notice and now Jackson citizens are experiencing low water pressure or have no pressure at all. Citizens say leaders need to find a solution and simply stop band-aiding the situation. When are we going to get our water back online? When can we get off this boil water notice? And when can we move on with our lives? It's just unreal, you know, for us to have to go through this and not do things us. It's, it's very simple. Fix it. That's our, you know, we really don't know what to do other than complain to them. Very upset. Why? Because we already having water issues, you know. We can't drink it. We just could bathe and we got to boil water and now we have no water. Well, here we are again, nearing the end of the year with uh, just a few days left. 
This might easily be a time of regrets because of things still left undone that we didn't accomplish this year. Or we could slip into melancholy because of the short days and the long nights and the clouds and the cold and the blazing autumn that we've left far behind by now, the trees having more than three quarters of the way fallen into bare branches in the bleakness of winter. We could just be celebrating nothing but the blahs every year this time of year. We could do that, except for Christmas. What the trees in our yards lack in greenery this time of year is easily made up for in the holly and the ivy decking the halls in every store and every house. And we welcome the eternal nights this time of year so we can light the yards and neighborhoods just that much longer every evening. And who remembers the regrets of the year past with wishes of good cheer everywhere? Christmas is a time to make merry and make memories. A lot of the memories I have of my parents and almost all the memories I have of my grandparents were made at Christmas. So make sure you make some memories for somebody this year. Our program is called A Mississippi Carol, and we call this year's edition The Stories of Christmas Past. Much of how we celebrate the holidays this year is based on what's gone on in the holidays in the past. Traditions is what we call that. Decorating a tree, a family meal, hoping Santa will come, going to church, going to grandma's house. Not that you have to do everything every year, but it's a pattern we go by, the memory of what was so fun about this time of year and years past. Sometimes it all needs to be brand new. And other times, we need to reflect. And for the next hour, we invite you to bake a batch of cookies or pour some hot chocolate, and sit down in front of the TV, and remember years past with us. Hello everyone, I'm Byron Brown. And I'm Melanie Christopher. Breaking news this evening. Oh, that's right. Ole Miss defeats <laughs> Oklahoma in Omaha winning the College World Series. Woohoo! We have live team coverage in Omaha and Oxford. Unbelievable atmosphere, guys, since from the time we got here until now after the game just ended moments ago. People have been cheering, excited. The atmosphere, I, I really can't even explain it. Let's get high! Let's get high! Let's go Rebels, baby! <laughs> what, what, what did you think of watching this live? I don't know. It was so cool. <laughs> okay, you want to shout out someone back home at Mississippi? Oh, yeah, Ingemar. <laughs> shout out to Ingemar. I, I'm speechless right now. Speechless? All right, so do me a favor. If you don't have the words, I see some words on this sign. Can you read this sign to me? What does this say? Ole Miss is red, Ole Miss is blue. Now they are world champs, and we love you. And do you love this team? Yes, with all my heart. As JSU's Sonic Boom marching band performed for Jackson City officials, that excitement spilled over from the football field where frenzied fans cheered on the Tigers, who would become SWAC champions for the first time since 2007. This is just the best ever. It's been a long time coming. The passion was undeniable, with head coach Deion Sanders and staff taking the squad to new heights. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm elated. I, I'm anticipating what we're going to do great tonight. You in the, our new facility that's not all the way done, but you can see that uh, we've made a lot of progress. Now, I know you talked about when we were at your birthday mm -hmm. that you want to see more of those people who were yeah. at your birthday at the games. Yeah. What is your call to action for these folks this season? Um, first of all, let's get our business straight. Let, let's get the interests to the stadium correct, so there's multiple entrances. Let's get the parking correct so that we're not missing out on 10 to 15,000 fans that would normally come in, but they don't because of the parking. You are gonna be walking the field this year. Yeah. Not rolling. Not, not rolling on a scooter, not on a knee scooter. Um, maybe not in the same pace, but uh, I will be, and that's a blessing. Thinking about that journey too, where are you right now? Mm. Sore. I'm, I'm thriving right now, but I'm good. Well, to an update, there has been a very special delivery to a Wisconsin man thanks to a Florence, Mississippi couple's discovery in Alabama. 12 News' Sienna Reeves joins us now with the latest on the Denture Adventures. Sienna? That's right, Byron. The teeth have arrived. The Denture Adventure has come to an end as owner Randy Williams has been reunited with his dentures after losing them while vacationing in Gulf Shores. Take a look at this video where Randy is reuniting with his smile once again. Oh, they're here. Thank you, Aaron and Blair. <laughs> 
Aaron and Blair Wilborn found the choppers while snorkeling. Then they put out a search on Facebook to locate Randy and over a week later, well, it's back in his possession. Randy also had the chance to read the four page letter about the dentures adventure and see all the fun photos Aaron and Blair captured with the pearly white. Now, according to Randy, he'll be eating steak tonight. As for Aaron and Blair, they're thrilled about its safe return and its perfect fit. There are very few things in life that ever turn out to be phenomenally successful that were ever planned out by a committee. Woodstock comes to mind. It sort of just happened, like the St. Patty's Parade. Crosby, Stills, and Nash said by the time they got to Woodstock, they were half a million strong. Well, at Jackson St. Patty's Parade, by the time we got to State Street, we were 75,000 strong. No, not half a million, no, but 75,000 is a third of the current population of Jackson out on the streets, ranting and raving and behaving like their inner self would really like to behave all the time, or at least like to be given a chance to behave like they are allowed to at the St. Patty's Parade. The city looks different when you're riding on a float than it does when you're standing on the ground, and the difference isn't just because you're up higher than the heads of the people standing. The difference is, from the float, you get to see the crowd as a whole. People lining the sidewalks 10 deep or more and blocking the streets where the parade route turns. And all of these people make the city streetscape look different. In some places, it looks so different that the familiar street level landmarks are so obscured that it feels strange. You could almost feel lonely in such a weird situation. But when you're in the St. Patty's Parade, you're anything but alone. As a matter of fact, you probably have never been less alone in your life. And I don't mean because you're surrounded by a dozen folks on the float with you and thousands of people on the ground with twice as many outstretched hands waiting for you to throw some beads. I mean, you can be at a crowd that size somewhere else and still be alone sometimes. But here, you aren't alone because you're part of something. Everybody here is all part of the same thing part of the same shared experience. And I think that is a great deal of the appeal of the St. Patty's Parade. All the fun of it, sure, and the chance to be outlandish, of course, but to be an integral part of the whole experience. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Sip live from the Natural Science Museum. This morning, my goal is to get you outside into some of the things that we do in Mississippi, including fishing, and that's why we have the fish here. But this morning, we've also met Boo, and Boo is a possum. We're gonna meet an owl or maybe a snake. You have to stay with us to find out. But again, I told you I want you to get outdoors this summer, and I went outdoors so that I could do a little fishing. Check it out. All right, we're still on our journey to the North Pole. Coming up after the break, we're going to find out what it's all about. Oh, that was the practice slide before the big boy. Stay with us. As we flew higher and higher, the views seemed to get better by the second. And so did the conversations, including learning how Fred got started as a hot air balloon pilot. I sent an email to the Natchez Balloon Race, and I said, how do I learn to fly balloons? And there happened to be an instructor in Meridian, and the rest is history. But our ride did not stop here. Woo! I did it for real. Okay, well, I'm not sure about piloting just yet, but I will ride again, and you'll see part two of that experience coming up after the break. Stay with us. <laughs> that was scary. Fast forward a few weeks following our news report, and there's been quite an improvement from the last time we talked to Mary Brown, who lives at the apartment complex nearby. I'm glad to see that. I'm really glad to see that because uh, it was a mess. Do you think uh, 12 News got results? Of course. Of course. That's the only way you're going to get it going. If you have some reporters coming out here and, you know, putting it on television and letting them know what's going on, somebody going to be ashamed and get the work done. Tonight, we'll hear from Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman, MDOT Commissioner Willie Simmons, and Scott Waller of the Mississippi Economic Council about the state of our economy, where we're going, and how we might get there. I spoke with Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman this week, and he offered his thoughts on the state economist update to lawmakers. Well, I uh, appreciate his advice, of course. We received contrary advice from just about every other publication that I've looked at. 
you live in or near any of those locations, you need to take shelter right now from the storm. This is a particularly dangerous situation. The environment that we're in right now over the state of Mississippi, we are likely going to see several tornado warnings as we go through the afternoon and into the evening hour. All right, thanks, Ken. And yes, of course, we're closely watching all the warnings we were just talking about. And again, this is now a moving uh, from Humphreys County now into Holmes County. So where do you go in the event of a tornado? The best option is going to be the most interior room of your home. And if you're in a mobile home, uh, you have to get out of the mobile home and into a sturdy structure because often too many times we see uh, those uh, in mobile homes uh, hurt or worse in the event of a tornado. It's just never a good option uh, in, on a day like today. We are concerned now that this could possibly be a tornado on the ground. So if you are in this area, I mean, we've been telling you for several uh, minutes now that you need to get in your safe spot, but definitely now so that we have a TDS on our radar. We are seeing tracking northeast at about 50 miles per hour. So this is now's your time. Your call to action to find that safe place. Call people that you know in this area as well. If you've been to a game, you've probably seen Evan. Sunglasses, headphones, cheering on the Braves, a loyal fan. He knows things about our team that I don't even know. Evan is probably the biggest Braves fan there is. He also has autism, something he deals with every day. But it doesn't stop him from doing what he loves most. He really likes the atmosphere. Ken Slay is dad, the man who takes Evan to about 90% of home games for whichever minor league team is in the Metro since the 90s. A baseball fan himself, a smile that comes on his face for a run for the good guys is a smile he has when he sees Evan enjoying himself. He always brings out the best in people. No matter where we go, we virtually never have any bad experience with him. And he'll he'll start asking questions or talking to people, and they immediately just turn on their best face. And if you notice, Evan's wearing headphones. He's listening to the Mississippi Braves broadcast called by Chris Harris, waiting for his favorite call. Kiss it goodbye. <laughs> it goodbye. Anytime you see him, it just puts you in a good mood because he's always in a good mood. Here in Mississippi, we have all kinds of stories about haunted houses. However, we have just about as many stories about haunted places, and this is one of those places. This is Stucky's Bridge. Over the years, there have been no telling how many genuine, bona fide sightings of paranormal activity on this bridge. Now my only problem is the legend that they've come up with to explain all of those sightings, to me, is just a little sketchy. So we decided, what better way to help us draw out our conclusions about the sketchiness of this bridge than to invite someone who draws and sketches for a living to help us. And so it is with pleasure that I introduce you to my friend, artist, Marshall Ramsey, who takes the storyteller's chair. This is a story that begins with neither once upon a time nor it was a dark and stormy night. And when it comes to fact and fiction, the lines can be a bit blurred. First, Chief Meteorologist Ken South has a look at your first forecast. Ken? Yeah, wetter day for today, but that's what we were expecting, a better chance of scattered storms about a 50 to 60% chance. Hey, come on, buddy. Let's do this weather here. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, you talk we're gonna I... do the weather together because he's got the mic. Uh, all right, let's step out of the way here. Okay. Um, we are going to show you that we have got, uh, well, the rain showers are going to dissipate as they usually do a couple of hours after the sun goes down. We'll see cloudy skies in the late 70s first thing in the morning. And we'll tell you more about the next eight days coming up in just a few minutes. And I totally agree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 